Welcome back to our homestead. Welcome back to our garden. It's finally a bright sunny day here in zone 8B in East Texas and it's time to do some harvesting. We have got a lot to harvest here in the garden. It seems to all happen at the same time. Today we're doing garlic, onions, and potatoes and we're going to show you the tools that we use to do that. Let's go. Hopefully the girls will come out and help me today. It is their chore, but uh, my in-laws are here, so they're having uh, some good time visiting with them. Anyway, you can see our potatoes are maybe a little bit past the time that they needed to be harvested, but it's been raining a lot. And you can't really harvest onions or potatoes when the ground is wet, so you need to wait until it's dried out. The best tool to use to harvest any potato is a flat digging fork like this. They've got tines that are close together so you are going to get those big potatoes that uh, ride up on the top of it and don't get stuck between the tines. And the tines are flat and fairly dull. So it's going to dig through that soft ground in those mounds but hopefully I won't stab too many potatoes. I'm going to get right underneath as far as I can get and just kind of pry it up and pop it up. Now some people like to just take the potato plant and pull it up and get whatever they can get off of the plant itself and then dig. I don't see why you would do that. Just stick the fork underneath, pry up. That's going to help you get the plant out, and it's going to help more potatoes come off on the plant. Like so look at that. Digging these out by hand is the best way. You don't have to pose on camera, silly girl. Just dig the potatoes. <laughs> uh, and getting your hands dirty is actually good for you. The good microbes in the soil are good for you. So I usually don't wear gloves unless I have a fire ant problem, which is pretty common here in Texas. So we're gonna need somewhere to put these potatoes. Do you think you can go and get the wheelbarrow? I right there, there I know, I already did over there. You wanna go get the wheelbarrow from over there? Sure. Now that we have most of our potatoes harvested, we are gonna Harvest the garlic, that's gotta get out of here. You can tell garlic is ready when the bottom leaves actually start to dry up. The first four leaves on the bottom to six leaves on the bottom. And then what that is, is the skin forming around the bulb under the ground. You wanna wait to that point so that skin forms and protects your garlic cloves. We're still gonna cure these, and I've done extensive videos on curing onions and garlic. If you're interested in those, go check at the top of the screen. But this Hori Hori knife does work the best because you wanna get down next to the garlic bulb and pry it up. And sometimes you have to kind of go all the way around it because the root system on garlic runs pretty deep and they're fairly tough. There's a lot of them. So you wanna get down, pry around, and pry them up. Pretty decent sized balls of garlic. You can see how big those that root system is. It kind of runs everywhere and I cut some of these off. So you get an idea of where those roots are going under there. I love garlic. Smells good. So we started to take the garlic and potatoes out of the ground. Now it's time for the onions. The onions are the easiest thing to harvest. Essentially, just pull them up out of the ground. So easy. Okay. Good, if it's easy, that's gonna be your job. <laughs> so it's, it's easy with onions when they start to lay down and the tops start to turn a little bit yellow. They're ready to pick. Just pull them up, lay them over on their side. We cure ours on a rack underneath our covered porch. Some people leave them out in the sun to cure, but the rain is too unpredictable for that. I don't want any mold happening. So we're gonna take them to that drying rack. I did a video on that drying rack in the past. If you are interested in that, click on the video link at the top of the screen. Just pick them and lay them over. 
pick them, lay them over, like that. Okay? These are the easiest things to pick. So let's show you what we've got going on in the rest of the garden. We've got some carrots that are ready, some spring carrots. These are Danvers, and those actually do need to get out of the ground, but the girls come out here almost every day and just pull them out of the ground and eat them. Do you even brush the dirt off of them? Not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> we've got a lot of green tomatoes right now. Of course, we've got a ton of strawberries. We've got Malbar spinach just forming. We've got a couple of zucchini that I picked the other day and already those squash bugs are attacking. I gotta spray them even more heavily now because if I don't keep up on it almost every other day, squash bugs will devour zucchini. And here's some squash bug squash eggs. Squash bug eggs, all right, get them. You have to smash them, rub them off or Mash them and rub them off. And yeah. stomp them. Unfortunately, no zucchini today. What else do we have going in the garden? Some things are going quite slow, like these butternut squash right below me. Our peas, our English peas, have already died back. Uh, last year they were still producing at this time, but this year they've died back. We are going to have a big tomato harvest this year. This is way more tomatoes on all of these tomato plants than we've had in a very long time. All varieties of tomatoes. These are some cherry tomatoes over here. We've got some homestead tomatoes down there. These are all Roma and San Marzano. Behind me, we've got our okra, still kind of short, and I'm not sure why. We've got a ton of beans here, and I know I need to dig into here and see if we've got any beans. Hey, Ariel, start looking for little beans. I see a couple. Our long Chinese asparagus beans back there are not growing as fast as they should be. And I'm not sure why, probably it's got to do with the soil. We've got watermelon right here. No watermelons on it yet. And that's pretty much it. We've got to get some more carrots in the ground and see if we can coax them through that heat of the early part of the summer <laughs> and midsummer here in Texas. We've got a raspberry patch that looks so bad. I did not concentrate on this. They've grown into the other bed here, so I'm not able to use this bed. Cucumbers aren't producing yet either. You saw the big bumblebee that almost landed on my arm. So things are getting pollinated well. We've got our kales just kind of struggling here. It's probably a nitrogen deficiency in this bed. Our beautiful salvia here with honeybees and bumblebees all over it. These are great. And butterflies. Oh, and butterflies. Yeah, you're right, Ariel. These are great to have in the garden. The flowers are really attractive for your pollinators. I highly recommend it. It's in the sage family. I highly recommend having a bunch of salvia in your garden for that purpose. So that's it, friends. That's what we've got going on in our garden right now. Those are the things we're harvesting at this time of the year in our zone. Let me know what you are harvesting in your area of the country or world, actually. Now go check out this video right here, which contains all of our gardening videos, including all the videos we've done on garlic, onions, potatoes, planting them, harvesting them, everything. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.